Going to find gold? I'm going to teach you the skills that you need so you can get out into the field and find it yourself. And you can even apply this to trying to find lost gold mines while you're at it. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need to know is how to understand and interpret USGS reports. Because they're going to use terminology that you've never heard of before. And you're going to have to know how to interpret geological maps as well. Foundation to all of that is understanding what the minerals are and what they represent. And the first thing I would recommend to you is understanding what the minerals are that are associated with gold and what's their relationship to the area that you're hunting. That is so critical because once you understand that, then USGS reports and geological maps start to fall in line. And it's very important that you understand different geological models and the seven basic deposition models that are gonna be found throughout most of your gold districts. I'll leave a list down in the description of those seven basic models. And yes, there are more, but these are the very basic. But once you understand that, you get out to a specific district and you see in the USGS report what the gold's traveling in, what the gang material is, what the host rock is, the timelines on your age of when the gold was deposited. This is gonna help so so much, especially when you're overlaying geological maps with known gold mining districts. One of the ones that's not far from where we're standing looks like this. This is one of many different types of geological maps that you're probably going to see when you're researching mines. This is a great example of a geological map that has a template of existing mines laid over the top of it. This is drawn up by a mining company that's been sampling good springs for the last couple years. Here you can see all the different rock structures and the fault zones that are incorporated in it, making it very easy to find potential load deposits. Now when we overlaid those maps, it was a no brainer to find gold deposits. And then when we saw the mines that are in that area, we simply looked them up on the USGS report and found out what their primary and secondary commodities was. And with that information, we knew what we were looking for and especially if it tells you the type of gold because remember you want free mill you don't want sulfides or tellurides yes you can get good gold in that but for most of us small scale miners stick to just free mill gold and all that means is the gold is native it doesn't need any processing it's not locked up chemically in the rock it's really easy to extract you can grind down the rock and then you can extract it using gravitational methods i also recommend that you understand basic geology now there are a lot of books online that will help you do this but there is a series of books that can reference your area and it's called roadside geology it's going to give you the foundational principles of understanding the geology in the area that you're looking at in each state and i'll leave a link to that down below also you have to understand faulting faulting is so important for gold deposition because it creates the conduit for the hydrothermal fluids to come up through the surrounding country rock and permeate up through the surface here to either alter or to influence gold deposits most of the ones that you're going to see is block faulting, slip and dip, thrust faulting, reverse thrust faulting, just to name a few. But you got to be familiar with that because you're going to read that in your USGS reports. And a lot of your gold depositions are dependent upon faulting, which is acting like a control system. Think of it as Mother Nature's plumbing to get the gold from the lower areas of the earth to the upper areas of the earth. Also, you have to understand calderas and volcanoes. They are critical for creating gold deposition in certain environments, especially where you have post faulting occurring through a lot of your rhyolitic material. That is a good area that you're going to find gold. Now, like I said, most of these areas have already been found by the old timers. So when you go to overlay your gold mining districts onto these geological maps, they're gonna line up perfectly. And then you're gonna see a pattern forming. And that's where you need to get boots on the ground. You must know how to use a gold pan because you're gonna use that to sample with. Remember, a gold pan is only used for cleanups and for prospecting. That's it. It's not a production piece of equipment. And when you're in the field, you have to know how to use it, use it efficiently and quickly. And always bring a classifier because remember, Remember the golden rule. If everything is the same size in a gold pan, gold will win out every time because of specific gravity density. Now, I know that there's a lot to cover in this, but for right now, I'm going to leave a list of books that I think you should get. That way you can read them on your own time and get up to speed on all this because one video is not going to be able to cover everything you need to know to get out in the field, but it will get you started. And these books include authors from people like Chris Ralph, who's a good friend of mine, Dave McCracken, Jim Strait, who is a legend in his own right on everything prospecting and mineral identification and metal detecting. These people written phenomenal books on everything from dredging to mineral identification and i'm going to leave a list of those and more and of course we wrote our own book too how to find gold which is going to give you a crash course on geology and i guarantee you're going to get more education from these books than four years of a geology course 
And I know it can be tough identifying certain minerals, especially when you're out in the field. And there's plenty of handbooks that you can get. And there's even apps you can put on your phone to help you identify minerals too. Although it's only about 90% accurate, it is a good step in the right direction. And of course, I'll leave all that in the description below too. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, Jeff, there's no more gold out there. It's all been found. Yeah, a lot of the easy gold has been found, but there's still large quantities of gold left in a lot of these old gold mining sites, placer fields, and hard rock mines. The majority reason being is because of World War II. A lot of these guys went off to war and never came back. Or Executive Order L208 shut down a lot of the gold mines. And by the time the war was over, it was too expensive or too tedious to open the mines again. So a lot of them stayed shut down. In fact, a lot of the ore never made it to the mill. It's just sitting there waiting for somebody like you or me to pick it up. And also keep in mind, they were going for the high grade stuff because they needed it to survive. They were literally counting on gold so they could live. If it didn't have high enough value to it, they threw it to the side or they put it on their low grade pile. Places like that is worth it for you and me because their low grade is our high grade, especially at $4,500 an ounce. Now you don't need a whole bunch of equipment to get started either. All you have to do is your research first, get boots on the ground, and if you can afford a gold pan, classifier, and maybe even a jeweler's I thought I was alone. Evidently not. Huh, let's go see what they're up for. Anyway, like I was saying, if you can afford a gold pan and classifier, small shovel, and possibly a hand lens, 10 times strength, you're in business, and you can get out there and start prospecting too. Let's go see what they're up to. Maybe they know where the gold is. Everywhere I go, I got donkeys. Look at this dugout right here real quick. And look at this. There's a square hole right here. You see it? 50 bucks says there's something here and it feels hollow. Yeah, there's something here. I didn't bring my shovel. I'll have to come back and check it out later. But yeah, you can definitely see that there was something here, a structure, a tent or something. All right, let's get back to what I was talking about. Look at this, I found another one. See this, this has all been cleared out. This is not natural. Somebody dug this out, it's flat. It's perfect for either a building or a large tent. And you can see, look, in the middle, another depression. Right there. Uh. Wouldn't you know it, the time that I don't bring a shovel. Now for you seasoned prospectors out there, I highly recommend you get yourself a good quality drone with good imagery on it because that is going to save you so much time and energy when you're out in the field. In fact, we use ours all the time. Yes, I know that there is a ban on DJI right now, but keep in mind the existing DJIs that are here in the States now, you can still fly them. Yeah, I know you don't get DJI refresh care, but it's still a good quality drone. And there are other drone companies out there that make decent quality drones. I highly recommend you get your hands on one, get good at it and fly it around. You don't need a license as long as you're not making money at it. And here you can see limestone. And then down here you can see the decomposing granite right here. See how soft that is? Right here, this is what the old timers were looking for. This, we tested has gold in it. This is what they were chasing. Now when we looked it up on the USGS report, we found out that this mine on the other side of this hill produced somewhere in the average range of two ounces per ton. But as you can see, the vein travels at a 45 degree angle. And then if you look up towards the contact zones here, right here, that's nothing but solid iron in there. And you can see the pieces of solid iron that we chipped out of here last week. Cause we're gonna take a rock drill and we're gonna drill into this, this uh, vein right here. And we're gonna sample in further because the gold we got was fine with some small little flakes in it. And I'm hoping the deeper we go, uh, the bigger the pieces of gold we'll get. So. You want gold? You gotta earn it. I already see pieces of gold right there. Let's see if I can shake it down for you. Oh yeah, look at that. See all that? Not bad, huh? Let's see if I can get some of that black sand off of there. Look at that. 
Oh, now if that ain't beautiful, I don't know what is. There's some wire gold right there. I don't know if you can see that. But all the gold is in these little pockets like this in this. And there's lots and lots of it. Now a lot of the gold that's found in that area is not associated with quartz. It's associated with this material right here, which is limonite. Limonite is just a journal term. Don't get caught up on it. It's usually red, has a lot of iron oxides in it. You also have two other minerals called jerosite and plumbal jerosite. And those deposits are extremely rich too. They're usually found with a copper halo around the lens. Here's video that we shot many years ago of the mine that we're talking about. It's up on the hill overlooking Sandy Valley. Of course, a lot of the areas that have gold have these markings around them. And a lot of the halos that I described earlier of the copper carbonates are around the jerosite and plumbal jerosite. Here's a good example right here where this pocket is very rich. You can find these all throughout the mine inside this one particular level. And right here is another good example. You can see the limonite and you can see jerosite and plumbal jerosite in there as well. And then of course you have these little halos of copper around these lenses. A lot of them have a tremendous amount of gold in them and some of them have nothing at all. So you have to sample them to find out which ones are the richest. Also when you do find a large pocket you'll see gold like this which is crystalline gold in nature. Very rich. Now that wasn't motivational enough. Gold is pushing over $4,500 an ounce and it does not take a lot of gold to make an ounce of gold. It'll fit in a little tiny vial. And yes, I understand that it's not 100% pure. It's usually alloyed in with copper or silver. But for the most part, you're gonna get a big chunk of money for a little bit of gold. And it's only gonna keep going up as the purchasing power of the dollar keeps going down. Uh, this looks like a good place right here. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned how you can use geology to help you find lost gold mines. And that's what we're going to talk about now. And yeah, I get it. A lot of these lost gold mine stories are just that, a story. But there is a lot of truth to a handful of them. And if you just put in the homework and get your boots on the ground, you'll see that it actually does lead to something. Case in point is a story I'm about to tell you of a lost gold mine that we followed up on. And yeah, we did find it. And it did take geology to locate it. But it was basic geology. You didn't need a degree from the Colorado School of Mines to find it. And I'm gonna explain how this works so you can use it if you ever decide to hunt on your own. Like I always say, you never know what you're gonna find in the desert. This shouldn't be here. At least it doesn't look like it should be here. Now, most of you probably say, hey, that looks like somebody put it there. No, once you understand the telltale signs, Mother Nature put it here. But it does tell me one thing, is that the water course used to be here, and now it's over there. And that's important when you're looking for placer deposits, especially up on these high benches. Now, if you're just getting into prospecting, I highly recommend you stick with placer gold, which is secondary gold. And when you get more successful at it, you can start looking for the source or load gold, primary. Remember, placer gold is poor man's gold. Load gold is rich man's gold. Because if you're going to start load mining, you better be rich to start off with because it's an expensive game, but it can pay off. One of the books that we have in our collection is this one right here from Douglas McDonald. It's a really colorful book filled with a lot of interesting stories. And we've hunted a lot of them down. And there is a lot of truth woven into a lot of these tales and stories. But the one we're going after today which is chapter 34 page 93 and it's the two lost mines in the McCulloughs. Now if you guys know anything about the McCulloughs outside of Las Vegas you'll know that there's a northern McCulloughs and a southern McCulloughs and they're divided by a fault. That's very important. The northern McCulloughs are younger tertiaries and the southern McCulloughs is mostly your older gneiss with a little bit of schist and shell mixed in. And a lot of your granitic rock and gneiss is a good host for that, especially in that area. Remember, do your research. So him and his partner headed out from Las Vegas Ranch and they went up into the southern part of McAuliffe's, which is just north of a little place called Crescent. And if you know the geology of that area, most of the gold is at the very southern end of the McAuliffe's because the geology supports it. There's actually several rock units that come in contact at that point, And you're gonna find a lot of these white quartz veins in the fissures that are traveling east and west. That's very important as well. And you'll see that in your USGS reports. So as Mashberg describes, one day they were sitting at their camp and a local Indian showed up, most likely Paiute, and they invited him in to have a bite to eat. Well, to show his gratitude, he says, look, 
thanks for giving me something to eat. I'm going to show you where there's some gold. His partner stayed at the campsite. Mashburg and the Indian left the camp to go find this rich ledge of gold. Well, as the story has it, the Indian circled around Mashburg and hit him over the head with a rock, left him for dead, took what he could from him. And when Mashburg regained consciousness and followed the trail up to get to the spring, in that area, he did find an outcropping that had free mill gold laced all through it. He collected up what he could, he went back to his campsite wanting to tell his partner, but his partner was killed by the Indian as well. Mashburg, not knowing what to do, regained his strength as much as he could, took as much water and food with him, and headed back to Stewart Ranch. The wound to his head and the long trip back to Stewart Ranch fogged his memory. So he was unable to recount exactly where it was, even though he tried for years to find it again. Kind of sounds like the old Charles Brayfogle story, and some people even associate it with this. So we decided to take the clues and the geology that we know, and we overlaid geological maps which would indicate rock units and faulting and in conjunction with my land matters we could determine exactly where there were prospects where there were adits and try to determine where there was a pattern and we did find one and it looks like this go into my land matters under topo and look for known mining areas or any type of mining activity here you can see i've got a lot of prospects i've got adits i've got some cuts over here i've got a spring which is in the story and this one particular prospect on the bottom right actually is known to have placer gold coming out of so i know i'm in the right area now click on to satellite view and you can actually see the quartz outcrops here on this ridge and if you follow it up to the top you'll see the fault that extends outward and that's where you need to chase now overlay that with a geological map and you can actually see where the quartz outcroppings are marked in blue and where they resurface again and you can see other dikes as well plus the rock units which we're working with nice and granite and then we click on the mrds reports here you have gold ore associated with pyrite sulfides and the rock unit is nice and then down below you have these neat little comment sections where it says ore probably in quartz ledges with bearing of a north east 35 which is very typical for gold and the vein is 10 to 20 feet thick dump fragments show comb quartz with pyrite class this is exactly what we're looking for now there is placer gold in a box canyon right next to it there is a spring right next to these prospects and there is gold in the quartz but i think that the gold is up further and it's going to warrant us having to go back to do another follow-up trip to find where that vein pokes out higher up on the hill by the spring now if you guys want us to go out there and make a video of us prospecting it you're gonna to have to smash that like button or as the boss lady says smash it hard and you know i had to throw that in there come on now like i said i use geology geological maps google earth and my land matters and I've done countless videos on how to use these type of sites so that you can cut down on your time when you get out in the field. Now, for those of you out there that don't know, my lab just came out with the Gold Monster 2000. It's got technology in it like you've never seen. And if any of you guys out there have a VLF or a PI, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And speaking of metal detectors, we're gonna be giving away a Gold Monster 1000 at the end of this month. And later in the year, we're gonna start giving away the Gold Monster 2000. Not only that, but we also give away 10 bags of incredible incredibly rich pay dirt from our drift mine and each one comes with a one ounce silver bar and these things are incredibly rich i can honestly tell you you will never see richer pay dirt bags in your life they look something like this And we're also going to be giving away a brand new Keen 140S dry washer, complete with gas-powered backpack and hose assembly, and a Keen puffer dry washer, complete with electric motor, so you guys can hook it up to a solar panel and run it all day. Now, if this sounds like something you want to get involved in, just look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you instantly qualify to get your hands on all of that stuff. And with the price of gold pushing $4,500 an ounce, it's the perfect time to sign up. And we'll see you on the next video.